Welcome to Covered, Health Insurance Explained. In this video, we walk through the Individualized Coverage, HRA, or ICRA for short. We know navigating health insurance for your employees can feel like climbing a mountain of confusing terms, conflicting opinions, and strange acronyms. We know employers have a lot of decisions to make already for their employees. Mike Combo from Anderson's or Mulan joins the co-op for a presentation on this new plan and covers exactly what you need to know. Enjoy! We're here to talk about the individual coverage health reimbursement arrangements. That's a mouthful, so I'm going to phonetically pronounce it ICRA. Um, it's just a little bit um, shorter, easier for me to say. Um, this is new. Like Richard said, IRS came out with some regulations on the operation of this this summer. We don't have 100% guidance, but we have pretty good guidance on how this will work. Um, starting January 1st of next year, any employer of any size can reimburse employees for their individual health insurance coverage and individual medical expenses. So it's a different way where the employee can control the cost. Um, this is funded by the employer, so this is not, the employees are, at least with it through the ICRA, are not um, participating. This is 100% funded, but you control the, the amount they're funded. There's no caps. If, if you want to reimburse $5,000 a year for, per employee or $50,000 a year, there, you have that flexibility to do it. And you can also, you can just discriminate um, among classes. You can set up classes and have different level benefits. And we'll go through that. That's because that's an important part uh, of this plan. Um, yeah, the, the qualified small employer, the short term is that is QSERA. It's very similar to this. We'll go over that a little bit in the difference. It's same concept where you're reimbursing employees for individual coverage. Um, it's a few more restrictions on that. Um, I think this is a little more flexible, um, and I think a lot of people will like this a little bit better. But like I said, there's no requirements for the employer. There are requirements for the employee to be able to participate in an ICRA. So the first one is they have to have minimal essential coverage, which means under you know, the Affordable Care Act, insurance policy has to meet certain criteria. You have, as an individual, have to have that as well. Or Medicare, you can reimburse uh, Medicare, you would qualify and the Medicare supplement. So you can reimburse somebody for Medicare and their supplemental insurance that they may have with Medicare, which, yeah. So that's um, a nice benefit of this. Yeah, yeah, so that is a good thing. Um, you're not eligible as a participant if you're covered under your spouse's plan, which makes sense. You know, if you're under your spouse's and they're getting a pre-tax or their employer's paying for it, you can't double dip and, and take the, a distribution or a reimbursement from your current employer. Short-term insurance plans don't qualify, and health care share ministry plans, even though you can have one of those, you can't have that reimbursed through the, an, an ICRA. So you, you want to make sure you let your employees know that. Like I said, any business can decide how much they want to contribute. Um, you can level the benefits based off of specific classes. There are 11 classes. One class is not, you know, owner, non-owner, or how much I make. Yet you can't divide based off of uh, wages. And employees, they have to substantiate to you every year that they have qualifying coverage. So that's one thing they have to know. Sorry, did you say you can or cannot discriminate between classes? Because I you, you can. You can. You can. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, you can. Within you, you can have different level, different class levels. Um, the 11 class levels are full-time employees, part-time employees, hourly employees, seasonal, temporary employees, or employees based in different locations. So you have multiple branches. You can have one branch be in a class and another branch be in a class. Um, foreign workers who work abroad, you could segregate them out and have them as their own class. And your union employees, so if they're covered by a collective bargaining agreement, they can be segregated into their own class and have their own benefit. And you can have an employee waiting period. If you have employees, you want to wait 90 days before they're eligible, you can put that, you can make that a class, and then they can start coverage after that time period. And you can mix and match. If you can have multiple classes. If you want to have a class full-time hourly employees, that could be a class. You can segregate them out and have a, have a class. So there is... Um, some variance there, a little bit of, um, we'll go through some of the requirements of classes, but there's some flexibility there. Um, 
which makes some sense. Within a class, so if you have, you have different classes, within that class, you have to provide the same benefit level. So you can't discriminate within a class, you have the separate classes, you can have one level and then a lower level, but within that class, it has to be the same with two exceptions. The first one is family size. So if you want to provide a benefit for your single employees at one level, have a higher level for the married, and then maybe even have a third level for a married couple that has kids or you have dependents, um, you can vary the, the amount you reimburse based off of that. And the employee's age. You can reimburse different levels depending on the employee's age. The caveat there is you can't have the benefit more than three times that of the, the youngest employee. If you have an employee that's, you're gonna give a benefit, single employee, maybe it's $5,000 a year, your older employees can't have more than 15,000, so it's a three time. And that, that mirrors under the Affordable Care Act uh, when you buy a plan on the exchange, there's, that's the same limit there, it's three, three times, they can't discriminate more than um, three times that. And that, that age well, is, is kind of a, a nice feature because under a group plan, you know, it's all, it's one, it's one premium for everybody. So the younger people are somewhat subsidizing the older um, employees. This would allow you, uh, younger employees, to have a smaller benefit when maybe their need isn't much, their insurance is cheaper anyhow, so you can mirror the benefit to match um, what their costs are. Um, another feature is you can, you can still offer a group health plan even though you have an ICRA. So you, you can offer one class a benefit of a group health plan and another class um, an ICRA. But within the same class, you can't have a choice. It's one or the other. So if you have a class of hourly employees and you have a group plan for that class, everybody has to be on that class. They can't have a choice um, between an ICRA and a group plan within the class with one exception, and that is exception for new employees. Now, you may be an employer that has employees that like the group plan, and maybe you want to phase in your, your ICRA plan over time and you can set a date where anybody hired after that date will automatically go on the ICRA and everybody else will continue to have the, the plan, the health group plan. So there's no choice, it's, you have a cutoff date, but that does allow you to phase it in over time, especially if you have employees that like the plan that they're on right now. There are, we, the class sizes, we talked about the different class sizes. There is a minimum size class in some circumstances where you have to, the class size has to be a minimum, and that is if you're offering a group health plan and an ICRA. So if you have both of those, you know, one class may have an ICRA, another class may have the group health plan. If you have that situation and your classes are based off of these five class size requirements, full-time employees, part-time employees, salaried employees, and employees who in different locations maybe have a different rate, one of these or more of these are part of your classes, then you're gonna be subject to the class size requirements. So those requirements are anyone under 100 employees, the minimum class size has to be 10. So if you're an employer with 10 or fewer employees, you can't have different classes because the minimum class size is, is 10. Between 100 and 200, it's 10% of what your full-time employee base is. If you have 150 employees, for example, your minimum class size is 15. And then when you hit the 200 employee size, the minimum size is, is 20. So from 200 to 2,000 employees, doesn't matter, the class size has to be 20. And that's full-time employees? Yes, that's full-time, correct. This is if you have both? This is, yeah, this is if you both have an ICRA and a group plan, and you, your classes are based off of one of those five. So if you're only offering a group plan or you're only offering an ICRA, let's say that the ICRA is all you have, this doesn't apply. So it's, they just don't want to make, people aren't setting class sizes up to just give, you know, in proportion of benefit to a few people. That, um, that's, the, um, that's the rationale there. Then the, the class size is dependent on the first day of your plan year. So if it's January 1st, that's the date you set. So if you have 10 employees on January 1st, somebody leaves in July, you're not disqualified for that year. You can keep that class, but come the next year, 
you're going to have to put those employees into a different class um, unless the IRS comes out with some guidance on safe harbors or, or something, but I haven't seen anything uh, on that. Um, but that is, that's, it is based off the first day of the year. The allowable expenses that you can pay, you can have a, a insurance or medical ex qualified medical expenses, which are medical expenses that you would get a tax deduction for on your personal return. You don't have to offer both. If you, you can have a plan that just has health insurance reimbursement, or you can have a plan and it has expense reimbursements as well. And you don't have to reimburse for every type of expense. You can limit it if you wanted to offer a benefit of health insurance allowance plus an allowance for just prescription drugs or just hospital visits. You can do that. You can limit it. It doesn't have to be all, um, which kind of helps you control the costs. So there is some flexibility there. So, so it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't preclude someone from having an HSA. So if they go out on the marketplace, if they go out and get a, a plan that would otherwise qualify for an HSA, they can, still, they can still fund an HSA or you can still fund the HSA. Or if you have post-deductible expenses that aren't covered by the HSA, um, those exp you could reimburse for those expenses as well. So there is some flexibility and they still want you know, people to... It's not real clear. In other words, the ICRA can pay your health insurance premium. What is that saying up there? It's yes. Allowable expense is health insurance. Right. That's one of the allowable the expenses. Premium. The premium. They, they could pay your premium on your personal insurance. Yes. Yeah. Yep. That's the whole concept of the ICRA is, is you go out and they'll put, you set the allowance. As an employer, you can we say, we're going to reimburse everybody $5,000 a year for oh. health insurance. You go out and get health insurance. If yours costs 8000 mm -hmm. then you're gonna, you'll pay personally the 3000 But they can also say, we're going to give you an allowance of 10000 That's going to cover health insurance plus your out-of-pocket costs. Right. So you, they would you know, pay the monthly premiums, and then you go see the doctor, go to the hospital bill. You submit that... Um, expense to the plan, and then they reimburse you uh, as a claim. So that's, the, so that's kind of the, the overall framework of, of how it works. Um, there's some other considerations you, you'll want to think about um, before deciding on one. Does anybody here have more than 50 employees? You know. But if you have 50 employees, then you're mandated to provide health insurance um, to your employees. Your allowance still has to be providing for affordable coverage under, under other ACA um, agreements. So you need to consider that. Um, IRS will come out with some guidance on what that means. It's pretty easy to determine under the, the law if you have a group plan what's affordable because you know what the premium amount is um, in advance. But if you have an employee that maybe they have qualifying coverage that's $1,500 a month, but they pick $2,500 a month, and then that doesn't meet, you know, you do the testing that says, well, that's not affordable. How, that's not your responsibility. So they, they understand that, IRS understands that, and they will provide some guidance and some safe harbor in the future. Um, so stay tuned, but um, there is that. If an employee goes out and gets a plan on the exchange, they're not allowed to get a premium tax credit or a subsidy if they're in the ICRA. So the, that bars them from getting that. So that's you know, one thing to consider. Um, if an employee, if the employee wants to opt out, you have to be able to allow them to opt out, one. but if they want to opt out because they feel they can get a better deal and get a subsidy, then that's... Um, so they can't both the subsidy and the Correct. They can't get that, yep. And some of the plans, depending on your plan document, and this does have to have, you do have to have a plan document that spells out how, you, how your plan's gonna work. If you're gonna have classes, what your benefit amounts are. It is a written document. Depending on how it's written, it, it could fall under ERISA laws. The DOL said, yeah, be careful because you may fall under ERISA laws and then you've got that whole, whole slew of, of rules to have to follow so, um, on that. You can coordinate um, payments that an employee would have to pay through a cafeteria plan. They can still run cafeteria plan. So again, if, if you, had a benefit of $5,000 a year, and somebody's plan for them and their dependents was $8,000, they could run that $3,000 through a cafeteria plan if you have a cafeteria. So they can at least still get their part tax, um, you know, pre-tax. If somebody goes out and gets a plan on the marketplace, you know, they'll qualify for a subsidy through an exchange. Under current law, that is not allowed to be run through a cafeteria plan. That would have to take congressional approval. 
they've talked about fixing that. I mean, they kind of understand that, you know, this is a different deal. I looked, I haven't seen any updates at that, have you? I mean, I, I looked less. Yeah, I mean, you know, they understand that hopefully we'll, they'll come in and change that. Just, it makes sense um, to allow that. Um, as, as part of your plan every year, every year you have to provide notification to your eligible employees that you have an ICRA, I mean, similar, and you provide them with the plan summary or the plan document so they understand the benefits, so they have the option to opt in or opt out. But that is a requ there are notification requirements um, just as you're doing that. This last slide here, um, it's kind of busy, so um, Richard provided that, which is nice. This compares the ICRA to the Qualified Small Employer Health Reimbursement Arrangement, or we'll call that a QSERA. Um, so you can see the differences, um, why you might want one over the other. Both of them are reimbursement plans, so they're, they're not um, group insurance. They're a reimbursement where you set the dollar amount of how much you're going to reimburse employees for premiums and medical expenses. Um, the ICRA, as we said, there's no requirements for employee, no limits to the employer. A QSERA has a limit of 49 employees. It has to be under 50 employees or you don't qualify to offer a QSERA. So that's the difference. QSERAs came out first. These came out second. Um, on a QSERA, every full-time employee is eligible for the plan. So there's no classes. It's once, you, once you're employed and you're eligible, you can elect to be in the plan. You can cover part-time employees, but you don't have to. That's really how you have to do it. Um, so in a QSERA, you can, you can participate um, in a non-minimum, uh, sorry, you don't have to have minimum essential coverage to be um, included in a QSERA like an ICRA. You, you have to have the qualifying um, insurance. You don't have to in a QSERA, but if you don't, you're taxed on the benefit. So there's a little bit of nuance difference there. But, uh, the QSERA has annual limits on the benefits that you can provide, whereas in ICRA, you can provide whatever benefit you want to different classes on a QSERA. There are annual limits. 2019, it's 5,150 for single coverage, 10,450 if it's for family coverage. Uh, so there are caps. The premium tax credits, we talked about ICRA, does not allow you to get a premium tax credit if you participate in a QSERA. The employees can still get a tax subsidy or a premium tax credit, but it's reduced by the amount of the benefit they get from the, the QSERA. But it does add some flexibility. Um, it's a nice thing where an employee, if you offer that um, benefit, the employee can still get, um, can go to the exchange and get a credit. I mean, that's probably the one advantage over QSERA, over, over NIGRA. And in, in the QSERA, there, you can't provide a health plan for your employees. It has, it's the QSERA or nothing, where under the ICRA, remember, we said you could have a qualified plan, group plan for one class, and an ICRA for another class. The QSERA is, you can only have the reimbursement. Sure. If you have no classes, No. So they have to have yeah. one or the other. Yeah, because they're, they're within one class. And that's considered just one class of additional classes. Right, yeah. The only difference would be it's a new employees. Uh -huh. you, could, you could put them into the ICRA and everybody else stay on the plan. Stay on the plan. Yeah. Right. So basically you'd be phasing out the, the group plan over time. So good question. But it's it's not it's taxable. But how do you determine then what costs you can cover? It's the same. Basically, think of it as I can take a tax deduction on my personal return. That would be a qualifying expense. Okay. okay. So if there are things that you couldn't, right, wouldn't qualify. Right. You couldn't you couldn't reimburse a health club membership because that's you can't take a deduction for that. But you, prescription drugs. Yeah, they can take a tax deduction for that, so. 
it just becomes a taxable benefit. Without MEC, what's MEC? Minimum essential coverage. Okay. So in the Affordable Care Act, the uh, insurance plan has to meet, you know, like preventative care, there's certain um, pediatric dentistry, all, all those um, things where it has to meet a certain level. There can't be, can't be lifetime limits um, is another one you have to have. So if you have those plans that don't meet those requirements, you can't be in an ICRA, you can still be in a QSERA, it's just taxable. So that's, that's all um, we have. I don't know if there's any other general questions that we didn't have. I mean, determining between the two, I mean, it's kind of a facts and circumstances of what you want to do. The bigger the organization, I would probably.